we might do. Hello. Uh, thanks for coming along to the New Zealand and Australian comics panel. Um, we're just going to try and sum up, jeez, mm, 100 plus years of, of our comics uh, with the people we've got on the panel here. Uh, my name's Matthew Emery. Uh, I'm a cartoonist and a publisher. Um, I, I publish uh, several cartoonists under Picketeer Press. And um, I'll just get everyone, if you could introduce yourselves, please, down the line. I'm Caitlin Major, um, one half of Space Pirates. Yep. Um, I'm Matt Hoddy. I'm the other half of Space Pirates. Uh, Jason Franks, I do the Six Myths for SLG and McBlack for Black House Comics, and uh, I'm mostly a writer. I'm Frank Gibson, I'm a writer um, from New Zealand, and uh, I write the comics Tiny Kin Teeth and Tiger Butter, and I'm co-founder of uh, Benign Kingdom, uh, the art book publishing company. Um, I'm Roger Langridge, I'm a New Zealander, and I've uh, done quite a bit of stuff over the years. I'm probably best known for the Muppet Show comics. Um, and uh, I self-published uh, Fred the Clown um, a few years before that. Great, cool. Um, yeah, we've, uh, both our countries, Australia and New Zealand, we're right down the bottom of the world, more or less, but we've had uh, very rich cartooning histories. Our uh, Australian Cartoonist Association is the oldest one in the world. It was set up well over 100 years ago. And we've had people like Noel Cook, who's doing science fiction comics pre-Buck Rogers, uh, pre-Flash Gordon in the newspapers in Australia in the uh, 1920s. And uh, also had David Lowe, a New Zealander, made his way through Australian newspapers through uh, over to England, worked as a cartoonist in England, and ended up on Hitler's death list during World War II. Luckily managed to make his way out of that. Um, but. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk a bit about the people we've got here um, and, and their various experiences because we've got a broad selection of people here who are at various stages of their careers and at, uh, in various different parts of, well, in parts of the world now um, from, from where they've begun. So I wanted to start off, if you guys could talk a bit about um, where you were living when you started getting into comics and making comics and how that affected the work that you made. Um, shall I start? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, uh, first got into um, comics through um, Australian reprints of Karl Barks' Disney comics. Um, we'd go on long car journeys, uh, my mother and my brother and I, and when my brother and I started squabbling in the back seat, we'd get these comics lobbed at us to shut us up. Um, yeah, pretty much everything I read uh, was either an Australian reprint of an American comic, um, usually in black and white, not always, but most of the time, or um, British comics. They had British humour weeklies with wacky names like Whoopi and Core and Wizard and Chips, um, which were basically one-page gag strips um, collated into a 32-page book. Um, and uh, they came out weekly. And that was sort of my exposure to comics initially. Um, yeah, mine was actually uh, fairly similar. Like, I... Um like I, was, I was living in New Zealand uh, when I first got into comics, reading like uh, New Zealand reprints and Ninja Turtles. But as soon as I moved to uh, Perth, Western Australia, I started getting into like Beano, and like all like the sort of like English humour um, magazines and periodicals. Um, so I was reading those, and then I started buying like mainstream American comics. And uh, a, a kindly gentleman in the comic store uh, set me straight at the age of 13, and he's like, "Here's a copy of Jeff Smith's Bone. If you like it." Um, you can pay me for it when you come back. And I did, and continued to pay for it for, you know, how long was it, like 10 years? <laughs> Jeff or Tom Bone. Um, yeah, and that's, that's kind of why I want to make, I'm, I want to make comics because of Jeff Smith, essentially. Um. Um, I started reading comics probably later than most people. Um, I started really seriously reading comics when I was in, at the end of high school, um, which I guess was when the Vertigo stuff started started coming out, so that was my initial uh, real exposure to comics, like Garth Ennis, Hellblazer, uh, Sandman, that kind of stuff. Um, I really got started working on actually making comics when I was living in Florida. Um, I guess I just kind of met up with some people in the scene there. There wasn't, wasn't much of a scene in, in my city in Australia um, when I'd left there. And, um, I was already writing, I'd published a, a few short stories, but um, that was when I got into comics. 
Uh, I guess I started very similar uh, to Roger and Frank when um, I was little. Um, I'd get comics thrown at me to shut me up um, on long <laughs> plane rides or um, in car rides. And I started with Spider-Man and Mad Magazine and those types of things, like Spy vs. Spy. <laughs> Sorry. They were, they were, I used to love them. I used to eat them up and just tear through them and reread them. I think I've still got them somewhere at mum and dad's house in storage or something. So like a whole collection of them. Um, but when I first started making comics was maybe when I was little, just started drawing um, really crude sketches and sketchbooks and um, at school and that type of thing. And I'd end up drawing more um, than I'd be learning. So <laughs> it's uh, um, kind of evolved. But I, that was a whole stretch where I didn't do anything for a while, um, like any drawing anyway. But yeah, that's me. Um. I think the first comics that I ever read were Tintin. My dad was a big fan, so we had, you know, he's a Kiwi. Yeah, yeah he was a, <laughs> he's a Kiwi that I don't know. It seemed to be pretty big, but anyway, we had a ton of Tintin books at home, and and then when I was a teenager, I kind of graduated to manga because I was really, you know, Pokemon and stuff was really big at the time, and I, I was obsessed with Japan and just, you know, anything I could get my hands on from out of Japan, I would read it. And, um, like, I probably started making comics. Um, my first memory of making a comic was with my friend. Uh, we were about 13 years old, and we made this really horrible um, comic about Santa Claus, and it was just it was, it was really offensive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we used to make comics about Spice Girls and, like, how they would have diarrhea and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when we started making Space Pirates, um, I had, like graduated from uni and I couldn't find a job because I'd studied animation like an idiot. And, uh, <laughs> and I had no, we had no money and we were living in this like really crappy apartment and I think that really, like it really influenced Space Pirates a lot because uh, it's about, you know, two kids who can't pay their rent and they live in a shitty house and <laughs> they have to like steal <coughs> stuff to get by. <laughs> We didn't steal anything to get by. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't turn to piracy. We, we may have pirated like software. <laughs> they don't like that in America. <laughs> we'll get in trouble. Oh, I didn't say that. That's not true. Anyway. So yeah, think, that's my story. Yeah, I think um, sort of some of the the common the thread between with all of us is that down in the in the colonies, I'll call them. <laughs> we, we, we had uh, we, we had access to English comics, which I gather are not that commonly available here. Um, Tintin and Asterix, mm -hmm. uh, all these things. We'd sort of get a smattering of all these, as well as all the sort of mainstream uh, Marvel and DC comics. We'd have Australian and sometimes New Zealand versions, where they'd just slap a cover on, you know, all sorts of odd, odds and ends. Um, so we got a real would get a real sort of mixture of, of comics. It's probably changed a lot now with um, the internet and everything, and you can get anything. But uh, for a lot of us, we, uh, we, we would have grown up on a, on a bit of a mixture. Um, I kind of wanted to get into the fact that, even though this is a New Zealand and Australian comics panel, um, uh, some of us have moved beyond where we sort of started. Um, I was wondering if you guys could talk a bit about uh, living abroad from you know, where you grew up, where you were born, and how that's um, factored, you know, what, what were the factors behind leaving New Zealand or Australia, or if you guys, like, I know some of us have talked about going further than where we are now. Um, well, for me, um, I always wanted to be a cartoonist, and I was aware from a very early age that New Zealand didn't have a comic industry. It, it, it had a few comics, there were people making comics, but nobody actually earned any money at it. Um, so if I wanted to earn a living, um, leaving the country was my only option, really. Uh, this is pre-internet. I think nowadays people do work from New Zealand. People like Ben Stenbeck um, work for Dark Horse through the internet. But in those pre-internet days, that wasn't really an option. Uh, so, so it was either America or Britain, being the English-speaking comics publishing places that you could go. And uh, Britain was the one I could work in legally, so <laughs> that's, that's where I went. <coughs> um, so yeah, I wound up in London in 1990 and, and basically hassled people and refused to go away. And I'm still <laughs> refusing to go away. Um, so I, I moved uh, from New Zealand about, it's almost three years ago. I, I moved from Auckland uh, to Los Angeles. Prior to that, um, I'd been traveling extensively. Uh, so when you come to America, you can legally stay here for about three months without a visa. 
Um, and that's what I did repeatedly. So I was like, what I'd do is I'd stack comic book conventions together. So I'd, be, I'd do like, uh, at one point I did five shows in six weeks um, just so I could afford the airfare because like uh, my, my partner Becky was living with me. She's American, but she's living in New Zealand. So we had two airfares, 12 hour flights from New Zealand to LA and then we'd go around from LA and then we'd leave at the, like at you know day 88 on like a 90 day visa. I did that a bunch. Um, and then eventually it became apparent that I was actually living in America and working illegally in America for a number of years. <laughs> and I thought I, there was probably about time to move. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as different now than, than like, as it was because like, for me, like the second I got here, I started getting work. Like the second I'm just like, I live in America now, I, I started getting like little jobs here and there. Uh, before I moved, it's just like, there's sometimes an out of sight, out of mind um, kind of thing with a lot of publishers. And like they've got other people to worry about who are in their you know, backyard essentially. And so yeah, the second I got here, it was, it was all on the up and up. However, the three years before that, I locked myself in my house in New Zealand. And thanks to uh, what we call the dole, um, <laughs> where we get money for doing nothing, um, I just locked myself up in my house and made comics for three years. And without that foundation, I would have never been able to move here and I'd never be able to do any of that work. Um, so what I'm saying is I take advantage of both countries extensively. <laughs> um, and that's the only way I can work out a living at this thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I, I mentioned before, I, um, I started really doing comics when I was living here and uh, I discovered a community um, nearby. Uh, I was living in Florida at the time. and. Um, Otherwise, I'd probably still only be writing prose. Um, I still probably do 50-50 prose and comics. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what Frank said I think is very true. Um, I noticed that a lot of the connections that I made when I was living here and, and doing the convention circuit, you're away for a few years, people forget you. And um, it makes it tough even, even sort of with the internet um, to uh, just to sort of establish a presence. Well, um, I guess we're at the opposite end. We're kind of just starting out um, our careers in comics. Yeah, we still live in Australia. We're not yeah. cool like these <laughs> <you> guys. <laughs> um, no, Australia's great, you know. Awesome. We, we got we got all the good stuff. I feel like kangaroos and stuff. <laughs> snakes. Yeah. snakes. Snakes. Spiders. Yeah. Eleven of the ten most dangerous snakes in the world live in Australia. Yeah. You should but, come visit. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but there, <laughs> there's definitely... <laughs> there's That's definitely a not like an industry in Australia. No. Like, you can't get a job making comics. You know, you have to... Ha everyone has a day job and they make comics at night. Um, like, I guess you, you probably could work freelance for, like, a, a big publisher. And, and a lot and, of people do. Yeah, well, a not a lot, probably. Like, like, like four. Four yeah, people, like four people. <laughs> in the whole of Australia. <laughs> but, um, years ago. you yeah. know, we're, we're hoping that it'll build up, um, you know, in the, just in, like, the last five or ten years, like, attendance at conventions has, has like, grown exponentially. And we're, we've got, like, some small press stuff happening now, which is nice. And... And like, like I don't know. It might be a good thing to sort of move away from the bigger publishers so that we can get a lot more like independent voices and and different stories rather than just superhero soap operas and <laughs> that sort of thing. But when we started making um, space pirates, because we were living in a shitty apartment um, and we didn't really have much work, so we kind of decided to make a comic, and um, we didn't know what to do with it, so we just started putting it online. So we started making a web comic. Um, and we did that for a couple of years. Um, and then we finally kind of decided, well, we should probably end it and move on to something else. Um, so it took us about two years. And from the start to finish, we've gone from like complete amateurs to like slightly better than amateurs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, we're here now. We're making so. progress. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. Um, I, actually, I, like, I totally agree um, with regards to like uh, independent comics. And that's that's my background as well. So I do like I do like all things on the side, mm. like but I consider my independent work like the main thing. Yeah. Mm. Like, and it's I, I'll, I'll be entirely honest. Like, no one's ever going to pay you as well as yourself. Yeah. yeah. Because you're deciding how much money you're worth when you're doing an independent work. Mm. Yeah. And there's no there's no middleman. It's just it's just you. It's just and you. you can and you can work out a living by yourself. Like with like web comics and like independent work entirely. Mm. Um, and I. 
like for people who are actually signing out, I think that's that is the most important thing is just to like not because like I've I've been doing this like not that long, but I I got like, kind of involved with publishers like in the last couple of years. Yeah. But that's because they knew me because of the other stuff I did. Mm. Uh, yeah. And if you're in a position where you don't need them, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> because you can turn down projects. And yeah. I have turned down projects, which is really weird because that, yeah. I never had, I've never had that luxury before. But it's just like... Just you wouldn't do that in New Zealand. <laughs> no, you'd just be like, yes, please. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like I thought when we first started um, putting Space Pirates up online, I'm like... This is going to be huge. Like, people are going to pay us so much money to read this for free online. I don't even know in my head how I thought that was going to work. <laughs> a lot of Australians have that sort of uh, idea. <laughs> Turns out you really need to put a lot more effort into it than just throwing it up online. You know, like, we've, we've been doing conventions, like, all last year and this year. Mm. And, like, just... Like throwing our comic at people, like trying to get them to read it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like conventions are really important, mm. and that's yeah. that's probably why I live here more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> is because like I can go to all these comic shows, and like I'll be honest, like I earn money at comic shows. Like I I wouldn't do them if I didn't. Mm. Um, but it's exposing your work to like a whole bunch of different people and creating a personal connection yeah. that is really difficult when you live in a place that it's just like, it's just sheer population size. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's the only real disadvantage that Australia and New Zealand have ever had. It's just mm. like, we just don't have as many people as mm. America. And yeah. people, <laughs> people tend to like comics over here more than in Australia as well. Or in New Zealand, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So. There's, I mean, there's a longer sort of culture. Of yeah. Kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. But like, and then you, but then you take here, and then you compare it to Europe. I went to Europe for the first time, and I was I just like tears in my eyes. <laughs> I'm like, they respect me. <laughs> they haven't even read it, and they respect my profession. <laughs> well, even living in Britain, it's um, it's important for me to come to American conventions because uh, otherwise, you know, people think I've died. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, that's kind of rough. Like I had a guy who actually he was like, I, I skipped San Diego Comic Con for one year, so it had been, it been two years since I've been in America at that point. And he walks past our booth, and he like picks up comics, just kind of whatever. He's like, ah, oh, so you're still making comics, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I already did a couple, only a couple hundred pages last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of leads to uh, another question I wanted to ask uh, about. How the internet's affected your work. Um, I wanted, it's, it's a few pronged question, but I wondered if you guys could comment on um, the, the internet for gaining readers and for uh, selling through digital models and also uh, crowdfunding. Um, uh, well, I, I, did, I started doing a web strip in, in 1999. Um, because I'd been doing illustration work for quite a long time uh, up to that point and, and a bit of comics and the comic stuff was getting less and less and uh, I wanted to do a comic I wanted to have something that I enjoyed once a week you know um, so I, I basically set myself um, this uh, task to, to make a, a page of comics every week and put it on the internet um, that, and that was Fred the Clown um, and pretty much my, my career from then uh, in comics, everything is a direct result of that, of doing that, really. Um, Fred the Clown has led to every other bit of work that I've had, either directly or indirectly, since then. Um, so, yeah, it was huge for me. It was, it was a way of motivating myself. It was a way of getting an audience. Um, and, it, you know, it was a way of doing all those things without it costing me an arm and a leg. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I'd, I'd be lost without the internet, really. I've never made any money off it, but, you know. Uh, it's uh, well. I say that I, I've sold artwork through the internet, and that's quite useful as well. Having a having a, a store that people can um, buy my artwork through uh, whenever they want, instead of me having to actually come to conventions and put it in front of their faces. So that's that's been a useful source of income as well. So yeah, um, I don't I've done web comics forever. Like it's that's that was just the only outlet I had because like I was living in New Zealand, and printing a comic down there is like uh, is a pretty difficult. Um, it's it's very difficult to get someone to print it, it's very expensive to print it. So I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna put it on the computer because I had just sat on the computer all day anyway. So I was, and that's how I was reading stuff. So I assumed that's how people were doing it too. And I did one comic for a while and it was terrible. And so I stopped. And then I did another one that is less terrible in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, and I've continued to do it to this day. And I, I, I'd agree, it's just like everything leads off that. Um, I, I have, uh, 
my income's kind of changed over the years. Like we're doing like a little bit more outside work now. Um, we're more reliant on contract work than we were before, um, which I'm trying to change. But my online store was my income for a couple of years, and some and that was when I was living in New Zealand because what happens is so the New Zealand dollar is not worth any money, um, <laughs> and, and so the American dollar is worth more. And if you take that like the couple of t-shirt sales because that was all t-shirt sales back then was like how you made your money off web comics. It was like you take that like twenty bucks and it turns into thirty five dollars sometimes. Like and it's like that's great and I can you know buy my groceries off that and yeah it's the internet has been like the most important thing to me especially living there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have gotten started without the internet. Um, like I said, I was living in Florida, but um, it was via the internet that I met I met up with that local community. Um, the first artist that I collaborated with that was uh, uh, I posted on a on an internet message forum saying oh, I've written an eight pager. Um, does anyone want to want to draw this? Maybe, um, and um, yeah, that turned out to be quite a quite a, a fruitful um, professional relationship that came out of that. And um, you know, as a writer of independent comics, you're always looking for people to work with, and the internet, um, even if they're local people, is absolutely the best way to do that. You look at portfolios, um, get in touch with people, um, and just the logistics of organising a, a comic book. Um, from uh, production through to printing and distribution, all of that. I just couldn't do it without the internet. Well, well the internet's quite important to us starting out, at least, because um, we're making web comics. We, we just chuck all the pages up there, like starting off with two a week, then sometimes three, and then at one point we're doing four. Um, but we burnt out on that really quickly, so we scaled back to three. Because um, we both work full-time jobs. Um, during the day to pay the bills and all that sort of stuff. But um, we actually, the internet, how it really affected us is the um, our crowdfunding campaign to get the book printed because um, we couldn't afford to do that, like save up enough money and everything. And we thought, I guess the best way to do it is to like pre-sell the book through crowdfunding. Um, and we don't actually have Kickstarter in Australia because it's America and um, UK only at the moment, but we have this thing called Possible it's P-O-Z-I-B-L-E. But it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, so we had a campaign through that, and um, we raised, was it six? Six grand. Six grand, which is, you know, you see some of them, like some of the more recent ones, they're getting like 20 or 30 on Kickstarter. It's like, how do they do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was enough to print the book and print some T-shirts and some prints and have a bar tab at our launch party. So we were like, <laughs> <laughs> stoked. Of course, you use your Kickstarter money for the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Australians. We were, we were giving it back. We were giving it back. I think it's more fair. No, no, that's no, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, crowdfunding's awesome, right? Well, like, the yeah. crowdfunding campaign was, like, it was, like, half, like, getting money off people, and it was half, like, marketing ourselves, because yeah. it was, like, an excuse for, like, for us to go, hey, like, you know, look at our stuff, and, and our friends to share it, and, like, really yeah. get people interested in it, and, you know, we, like, did, like, newspaper interviews, and w yeah. we were on the radio, yeah. we were, like, local stars. I'd say <laughs> that, that was probably the turning point for us, really, yeah. when we went from being just, like, Two kids in a room yeah. drawing I guess, comics. I guess like we kind of got it at a really good time with crowdfunding because like it seems now that crowdfunding has reached this point where it's like everyone's crowdfunding everything and people are getting a little bit sick of it and you know you got like celebrities crowdfunding like millions and millions of dollars and everyone's like oh god you know yeah <laughs> Zach Braff oh, yeah yeah, yeah. so his, his so fault. we got in yeah. we got in like <laughs> right before that when it was still like everyone was like oh what's this crowdfunding thing and, happening? and when you were doing it there was maybe one or two other comic projects in the whole country yeah that yeah probably weren't well yeah. we had a friend um who was trying to crowdfund his um He's got like a, it's called Ashcan. Um, he basically prints people's comics for free, like uh, self-publishes um, people that want to get into comics. Mm -hmm. And he had a crowdfunding campaign that uh, didn't make it uh, because there wasn't enough support for it. But um, uh, there wasn't any fault of his own. I think it's just Australia in general being really lame with comics. I so. didn't know that they were... Crowdfunding yeah, they, yeah, that's, that's yeah. True. I think the other thing is that he didn't really tell anyone. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> the key to, to crowdfunding is that you got to tell people that you write, yeah. you want you want money. <laughs> yeah, you have to be real, like really loud. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've I've done 
Um, like I founded a business off Kickstarter. Oh, uh, wow. My publishing company is was it continues to be entirely funded by Kickstarter. Wow. We've done five book releases through it now, and we just keep we keep on going back to the well. But that well's drying up. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, it, I really feel like it is. Time for another Kickstarter. Yeah, time for another Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> like, but no, I, I, do, I do agree with you that crowdfunding is completely oversaturated at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Like I did my first Kickstarter in 2010. Mm. Um, like and no, no one had any idea what Kickstarter was. And yeah. a friend, of, it was invite only. Oh. And a friend of mine did a, uh, my friend Spike, who did like a comic called Porecraft. She's like, hey, do you want to invite to this thing? People give you money for no reason. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, well, that sounds good. Um, and I did it. But the cool thing is the stats. Because yeah. I got to see where everyone came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of the time, it was, at that point, your own audience. Yeah. And it's gone back to that now. Mm -hmm. Whereas like there was this point in the middle there where it's like everyone's like, yeah, Kickstarter. And people were going on Kickstarter trying to buy stuff. Yeah. And it's just like they were just looking for new things to like give money to. Yeah. Whereas like now it's just because like they would show you the stats. It's like eighty percent of this funding came from Kickstarter at its peak. Yeah. You're like, great. That's twenty percent your own audience, eighty percent theirs. Now it's like back to like eighty percent your audience, twenty percent theirs. I think I think there was also a lot of bad press around Kickstarter with people like not fulfilling their orders yeah. and like like we even got asked like we did like a like a local radio interview and the guy like asked us this really loaded question about um you know oh i've heard all this stuff about people not not like sending out the the things that they intended to and i was like well we sent out our book so like <laughs> don't even talk to me about that i don't even know <laughs> yeah i suspect one of the, the the big advantages of kickstarter apart from the money is um that you have a database of all of your readers after that you know yeah. so you can directly market to them you not only know how many readers you've got, you know their names and where they live. The worst one for that is uh, Facebook fan pages. Mm. The stats on those things are creepy. <laughs> I know how old everyone is. Uh. I know gender, location. I don't even want any of that. <laughs> That's automatically there. I like log in there like, you have like, like 200 fans. And guess what? They're all in this one place. <laughs> and it's, and like, I did actually use that. Like I I visited conventions because it was like when I did my first convention in London it turns out that like like uh, like twenty percent of our fan base is in London. Oh wow! So I did, uh, so yeah we went we went to London and it was like oh that was great like so it's useful but creepy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Kickstarter it actually got to the point where last year someone said to me hey you've never done a crowdfunding campaign can I can I run one for you and I was like well what what book do you want to sell like you know right. like, all, all my stuff is in print. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, just we'll, we'll just do a reprint. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of at the point where perhaps people are misunderstanding what it was established for yeah, and um, definitely not quite using it appropriately. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a, a bit of a broad question. I asked Dylan Horrocks if he could tell me what. What do you think are some of the commonalities in uh, New Zealand comics? Yeah, it's, uh, where is going? It's, uh, <laughs> he's at home in his, in his cushy As always. island bay, you know. Yeah. Um, but he, he uh, I want to know, like, if he thought, you know, what are some of the common elements in New Zealand comics? Because, I mean, New Zealand and Australian comics are broad and diverse. There's real shoddy genre material, and there's people producing masterpieces that no one will ever see. Um, there's guys that do hundreds of pages that they just they don't even print them. Uh, but yeah, I wondered if you guys could talk a little bit about some of the things that you think are maybe common threads in uh, New Zealand and Australian comics. I, I could probably um, start one for you actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Looking at uh, Roger, I think uh, New Zealand comics and um, and in like cartoons, newspaper cartoons. Uh, humor is a strong part of it. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, very New Zealand orientated um, humor. Well, um, I, I do think that um, the fact that there's no industry is is um, a strength in some ways because everybody's doing it because they really love it. Yeah. Um, so nobody's really trying to think what's going to be commercial. They're thinking, you know, uh, what do I like? What do I want to make that's uh, that's going to make the world a better place, kind of thing. And for a lot of people, that is something funny. Um, so I think that's, you know, there, there's a certain purity to it, uh, which I don't think you necessarily get here. Um, I think everybody, well, I, no, not everybody, that's, that's unfair, but a lot of people who do comics here um, assume that they're going to be able to make some money out of it. 
Whereas nobody assumes that in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> that. Not for long, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even pick a common thread in my own work. So. <laughs> yeah, I well, I mean, Dylan um, did not, he just he didn't really give me a specific... I think um, in Australia, there seems to be, like, two poles, like, when it comes to Australian comics. Like, you have people that go for, like, the really superhero-inspired, like, you know, manly men and, and Aussie, Aussie, Aussie sort of thing. Yeah. And then you get people that are, um, it's much more, like, surreal and, and yeah. um, like, more artistic, I guess. Like... More, more personal work. Yeah, more yeah. personal. Yeah. I, I, I sort of resent having a, having a, you know, choose one or, one or the other camp. Mm. I mean, I, I'm sort of all over the place. Well, the, I mean, there are people you know, that like do, uh, for lack of a better term, commercial work, but also do their own personal mm. projects and, yeah. you know, um, I don't and feel sort like of balance one it. should be privileged over the other. Mm. Um, but it is funny that there's definitely an expectation that you're either doing um, some kind of, I guess, um, you know, very commercial stuff or that you're doing art gallery stuff mm. where you're expecting the pages to be hung in a gallery, not, and, you know, mm. pr printing a, a book is... Mm. It's kind of a, you know, why why would you do that? That's a commercial product that people <laughs> there also would seems buy, to be and, and, and they'd read it. How dare they? Um, they also seem to be a lot of like really dark and gritty yeah. horror. <laughs> like, have you noticed that? Yeah, like, uh, lots of people like it's really dark and gritty. And, yeah, people, and yeah, that's me too. <laughs> yeah. People got to like Alan Moore a little late in our country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, like they're like a lot of the comics that like. And this is, a, this is a difficult thing because I, I honestly think there is an apprehension um, I've found to produce a, a serious personal work in New Zealand. There are very f I feel like there are very few people who are trying to do that um, because I don't think putting yourself out there in that way is really part of the national character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, um, uh, it's not. It's not. Like, New Zealanders are pretty reserved and they don't, yeah. you know, they don't um, want to sort of make much of them. You know, put themselves out there as such. Yeah, you, exactly. don't, you don't really find many, like, journal comics. Like, I know journal comics in America are a really big thing where people no. just write about their own life. Mm. But yeah. you would never... You, like, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that come out of Australia. It's always been... Whoa. I've done a, I've done a few bits and pieces of, like, sort of autobio stuff. Um, and a lot of them, especially the more recent ones, I try and take myself out of it as much as yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I've got one where you don't see my face until the last page. Yeah. I've always got my back to you, and, mm. and there's... I don't know. It's so. usually, I mean, there are personal comics, but they're usually at one remove from the actual reality. Like, mm. a lot of Dylan's stuff is yeah. very um, inspired by his own life, yeah. but uh, he's, mm. he's changed the names uh, to protect the guilty kind of thing. Yeah, like, Dylan's exceptional, yeah. but, like, he's, he's, some, he's something else. Mm. Like, he is one of the bravest cartoonists yeah. I've, I've, I've ever seen work in. Yeah, he's wonderful. But even with like space pirates, you know, we we wanted to make a comic about ourselves, but it wasn't about our life. It was like the life that we kind of wished that we had. But then like we made the characters, they kind of look like us. But then I was like, I'm gonna make mine have pink hair. Cause I really <laughs> like that. I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. so I it, wish I had pink hair. That would be right. It is. It is kind of autobiographical in a sense, but obviously not literally because. You know, we yeah. can't fly out into outer space and rob people. And then it goes <laughs> off on a tangent. Yeah, <laughs> it goes pretty random. But, you know, the the core part of it, like two kids looking to, like, do something more with their lives to pay their rent instead of just, you know, getting jobs at a store or something like that, I guess, was the initial kickoff um, in the back of our heads, like right deep down in the creative center. Um, but it turned into something completely different, which still works, I think, so... <laughs> Uh, it's good to like let it evolve like organically yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, people, I think there's a, there's a genuine like unwillingness to like divert from your original like creative direction, and it's like good, let it go, like yeah. let it take you where it's taking you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the thing with like making two or three pages a week is that we had like this story in mind, but then we're like, you know what, let's let's do this other thing instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, did, and we got to that point like we like on that tangent, and we're just like, wait a sec, wait a sec, what if we did this? It was like the hardest oh. thing in the world to write because I'd like I'd have like written like a whole issue and then Matt would be like, wouldn't it be cool if like this happened instead? I'd be like, oh my god, now I have to rewrite the whole thing. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it would be cool, but damn it. <laughs> Comics aren't easy. It's a hard life. <laughs> We're all so self-indulgent. <laughs> yeah, man, drawing pictures is hard. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I was wondering if we, um, we could just get you guys to maybe run through some of the uh, recent projects you're working on and sort of what's currently in development. Um, okay, uh, I've, uh, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of between projects at the moment. I was supposed to start doing something for ODW um, in June and it's a licensed thing and, and they're still um, stalling. So uh, I've been doing mini comics in the meantime. I've done a couple of mini comics called um, The Fairs about a, well, the, the, tag, the tagline is the man who isn't there. He's, um, the idea is that he's somebody who doesn't exist, but enough people believe that he exists that he kind of does. Um, so, yeah, I've done a couple of mini-comics with that character. Um, I've just written a graphic novel for Kaboom, uh, which I'll be drawing either very soon or after the IDW thing, depending on what, what happens, um, called Abigail and the Snowman, uh, which is about a little girl who finds a yeti in the park. And, um, yeah, that friendship and adventure. Um, uh, yeah, that's me. Um. So I've, I've been doing my web comics for a really long time, but uh, I just finished up a project called Capture Creatures with my partner Becky, which is we decided to do 151 different creatures, kind of like the original Pokemon. Um, like the original designer of Pokemon, Ken Sujimori, uh, painted all the originals in watercolors. And we thought, well, that'd be fun. And then two years later, <laughs> we, have a, <laughs> we have a book. Um, so we're doing that, and that's released through our own publishing company as well. Um, we're doing some Boom stuff as well. We're doing more Adventure Time stuff, more Fiona and Cake stuff. Um, more capture creature stuff. Uh, what else are we doing? Web comics. I think I have like three kids' books at some point. I don't know what they're all called yet. <laughs> it's very stressful, <laughs> but it's it's wonderful. Like I'm having a great time right now. Um, I've got Six Miss Volume Two, which will complete the story, which will hopefully be out early next year. Um, I have some more McBlack in the works. The second volume. I've got two more issues of that going on. I've got um, some other stuff that we're still pitching. I'm doing a, I'm trying to do a, I'm putting together like a, um, a sort of 90s style indie, um, indie comics anthology, which I've written a bunch of stories. Um, there'll be six different artists doing that and those will all be sort of ungenre material. Like I, I had that collection come out this year of my ungenre short stories. So I'm going to do a like an indie book full of some more stuff like that. So like tall stories, comedy, um, autobio, and um, trying to sell my second novel and finish my third. And um, probably probably out of most of the Australian uh, comics makers, I know Jason works for every publisher and and, <laughs> and, and, and publishers outside of Australia as well. Um, I only work for Black House in Australia. I don't do anything for Milk Shadow or Gustavo. Oh, don't you? Oh, okay, okay. Or Picatillo. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but you, uh, Six Myths is coming out through... Um, SLG, yeah. Yes, SLG, right. Okay. Good. Um, well, since we finished Space Pirates, um, well, it's kind of finished. We finished that first story. Um, we'll probably continue on with another story. But we've also put together a, um, like a script and a storyboard for like an animated pilot. Um, just to make ourselves, just to see how it goes, I guess, because um, you know, we both studied animation, film and TV, so we um, would like to get into that area um, at some point. But we um, both have own, our own comics um, that we're developing. Um, mine's about ladies in mecha suits fighting mutants in the future. It's all pretty fun and games. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got a few things going. Um, that we'll probably get to after this trip because this is this is pretty big for us. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you guys out here for? Like two weeks. Two weeks. Cool. Like so, you, you've hit, like you've been in the country for a little bit already. Yeah, yeah for like a yeah. week. We, so you you've hit DC, New well, York. We, went, we haven't been to New York uh, yet. No, no, we were in LA yeah. and San Francisco. Are you in LA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, I, I guess if you like that kind of thing. We stayed downtown, which was a bad idea. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Chinatown, and then we got there. I was like, Oh my god, this place is a dump. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like people are just like, Yeah, downtown LA, it's gonna be like Manhattan. Nope, <laughs> tents, yeah. flaming barrels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I live near a lake, <laughs> just have to go a little like, Yeah, it's like. It, like LA has its pockets that are good. Yeah, oh, well, that's the thing. Like it's, it's really hard driving around. through LA because yeah. like it vacillates. Like you get like a like a really.
really nice looking place and then like five minutes down the road it's like homeless guys and, yeah. and like boarded up houses and stuff it's just yeah. a weird place I, I remember like my, my first trip I was like I caught a bus from the airport and it was like a really bad bus I got the wrong bus and it, oh. took, me th- it took me through this nice neighborhood called Watts um, and I was just like, oh, this is fine. Like, w- like I don't see what the big deal is. And then I was like, why does that house not have a roof? <laughs> and I was like, oh, so this is what poverty is actually like in America. <laughs> Some <laughs> of this stuff is surprising <laughs> for innocents like us when we yeah. come from our paradise down the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Blade Runner. <laughs> oh, man. It so was. But we went to San Francisco and that was really nice. Even yeah. though we stayed in like the worst part of San Francisco, we stayed in like the Tenderloin or whatever it's called. Yeah. But uh, like even then, we were kind of like, oh yeah, there's homeless people, but you know, you go off the road a bit, and it's quite nice. Yeah, my first time in San Francisco, I had someone pointedly have a seizure at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it can be a little bit like, you know, we're small town kids. Yeah, <laughs> like I kept saying, I feel like a pig in a big city. Like I just, I really have yeah. no idea what we're I'm like doing. Babe. Yeah, I'm like babe. Yeah, I'm like babe. Just Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm like that duck from Babe. That's oh. what I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> I got no idea what I'm doing. Like, I, like it would be cool to, to talk to some publishers and and like maybe pitch. I don't really know how any of it works, but yeah. <laughs> you, you, you say hello the, and then the you send them an email. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just have to. You have to be that. They, I feel like such a jerk doing it as well. You're just like. Hi, it's me. Here's my stuff. You've seen a hundred other people's things today. Please give me a job. <laughs> like, like it, it feels so hollow and empty, but you do it and you put a smile on mm-hmm. and eventually your soul kind of crawls away into the back. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine. <laughs> but, um, you've got your comic that you're working on too. Yeah, I'm working on like a uh, magical girl comic because... I re- read a lot of manga, and so my brain is a bit destroyed by it. Um, and yeah, I, I make comics at work sometimes. I, I work as a medical illustrator, and I get to make comics about medical stuff, which is nice. About Digestive system. And, yeah, about defibrillators and stuff. So I'll continue doing that to pay the rent and, and work on my other comic at night. <laughs> cool. Um, well, we've got a few minutes left, but um, we'll probably take a question or two if anyone's got any. Hi there. I'm always curious about um, cartoonists from Australia and New Zealand trying to figure out how to write for an American market, because I know there are a lot of things that sometimes you're not aware of um, that are not, they're not culturally applicable, they're not, like, people don't understand. Do you guys have any, have you had any experience, like, writing something or drawing something and then having to, like, redo it or, like, trying to figure out a way around something? Sorry. <laughs> Um, I've had uh, I've run into trouble using the phrase "get busy," um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what editors are, editors are for, you know. They 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 tell you that you can't do that. Yeah, it's not appropriate for a children's comic. Is it so? Let's like get get busy, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, I, think mean, small I, town. I think it means <laughs> get horizontal here. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um. No, no, I like. Like, I, I run into editors, but not out of, like, a... Like, I don't think it's, like, a cultural thing. It's probably just I'm not that great at my job yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Like, I like I don't specifically write for an American audience or anything like that. But and I, I try not to pander, um, because I, I feel like people can see that. But I, I really... I try not to... Like, I just want to do what I want, mm-hmm. anyway. And I, and I do it. If they don't like it, they don't like it. I'm not sure it's, like cultural so much as it's just me. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's probably the best approach. Like um, Some of the uh, recent Australian cartoonists that have kind of made an impact in uh, America, uh, Pat Grant, who did a book that was just absolutely Australian, talking about um, race issues in Australia and that, but it really went down well in, in America. And um, Simon Hanselman, who sort of does kind of autobio, uh, comics, but using uh, anthropomorphic characters um, as sort of ciphers and that, and he's yeah he's m- more well known and popular in America and around the world than he is in Australia. Like a lot of people are just not hip to him in Australia. So um, sometimes people that are just doing personal work is what gets uh, better received than people who are trying to cater for a market or anything like that. Yeah, like Dylan's book. 
Like Ed X- Dillon, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. X- Xville, like in the nineties, was like it was like one of the biggest indie comics, and it is just about New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> there wasn't a New Zealand edition. You couldn't buy it in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah I mean that's uh, that's the like, funny thing. It wasn't yeah, until like years ago, like two or oh three years yeah, ago. only a few years ago that there was actually a New Zealand. It's a edition. University of Waikato put it out or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. that edition. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Um, another question? Is anyone? Fellow here, I'll just uh, as a bloke bring your mic down. Um. Okay. How do y'all enjoying your stay in DC? I like it. Oh. Like, yeah, this is my third SPX. I, I've I've always loved it. Like like coming here, even when I was living in New Zealand and having to travel all that way. Like yeah, it's great. The weather um, is nice. So yeah. I, I, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think of this place as Washington SPX. So, <laughs> well, the f- this is the first time in years that I've actually had some time to look around the museums and things. So I've, I've been enjoying that. Yeah, it's uh, normally when I come to a convention, it's in and out, and I'm off back home again. But uh, because I was doing two conventions this time and I had a bit of time between, uh, I've actually been looking at the city, which is great. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty exciting to see America and. Uh, and uh, all the just everything's big here. I can't get over coffees. You guys drink yeah. buckets. <laughs> <laughs> that's like five I, I, I asked for a small coffee, and it's like the equivalent of our, our large coffee. Is this your, is this your first trip over? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever been here. So, uh, we ordered yeah. an entree. Oh, uh, yeah. In, in, in Australia, an entree is, is that's an a appetizer. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we, we ordered entrees, and we got these like huge plates of food. We didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, even people are bigger. Like, the, I, I've never seen people so tall and, and wide and, and everything. <laughs> no, it's, no it's, uh, it's, it's different down our way, you know. Uh, don't, don't go to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, we, we should probably wrap it up. This is going to be another um, panel shortly. But thanks for coming along and uh, listening to us. Thank you.